Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Godzilla Kong The New Empire. I gotta say, um, I can't believe I could sit through like a Madam Web or um, another movie that I kind of know isn't very good in the sense of critical acclaim, but I'm having fun and enjoying it. This movie just doesn't want me to enjoy it. So right off the bat, I think this is a missed opportunity. It's a it's squandered, you know, a squandered project. Almost a let's get this going off the success of Godzilla vs. Kong. So in a quick summation of my love of this monster verse, original Godzilla King Kong classics, you know, I'm born in 71, so it's a special place for me in that sense. Love Godzilla's history and rich tapestry of movies and you know anything else that's the cartoon was even pretty cute back in the day the resurgence of kong and godzilla i thought were pretty good in the sense that kong skull island i thought was probably the best of them the first godzilla where they kept shutting everything off in front of you and not letting you see everything was shit with the fucking guy from the army the kick-ass actor i didn't like that one particularly so it's one of those i never watch again Kong, Kong Skull Island, I have watched numerous times with other people or friends. Not the same with the Godzilla. But the Godzilla with the you know King of Monsters, I enjoyed. But a, for the most part, it got the action and monster stuff right. And that part of me, you know, over overtook the bullshit nonsense they still try to do with these movies. And they may be meaning hollywood godzilla because although i don't appreciate um <laughs> the uh shin godzilla movie and i shit on it a, a bit here and there but it has its value i really love godzilla minus one it's a way of not godzilla doesn't have to be in the movie the whole time but it's it's acting its story is it hits you at home you you relate to it it even in a different time period I and mean, you shouldn't relate to it because it seems the dialogue and everything is structured and it just goes together well. And I think it's the first Godzilla movie to win an Oscar or some award. Good on them. Fine. The Godzilla Kong, where at the end, there's the Mecha Godzilla. I kind of enjoyed the way I would like maybe the first Superman movie, Man of Steel, where it's a shitty fucking movie. Once Superman puts his costume on, fine. But with this new monster verse type thing, I, I start to my brain starts to get a little weirded out when there are clearly things they should be doing which are more intelligent, sentient like creatures or beings. And when you have the fight in with Mecha Godzilla, it almost translates to okay, there's an animal instinct, the communication, fine, you see it in the world when you watch enough a wildlife stuff i can get that but you're also dealing with um use of a weapon or an item or setting up things and again it, it didn't blare in my mind as warning i i tried to appreciate it as they're trying to do a blend of some of the old godzilla king kong movies a little bit of campy a little bit of sci-fi weirdness and let's you know elevate it and bring it to modern times so for the most part, I'm gung-ho, almost excited for every one of these, until I obviously I watch it. But don't don't tell me 40-something minutes into this movie when Godzilla becomes anything of a fucking presence in the movie, and I'm supposed to be um, excited for it. And it, it just kept... Okay, so the movie starts off really good. Um... You got the pacing down, you got a little bit of action going, you're finding out a little bit through showing, you know, what's going on, and Kong's in his whatever. And even if you want to glance at maybe what Godzilla's doing, let's get the first opening of the movie. Let's screech it to a halt. And fucking start going into mundane bullshit that could have been put somewhere else. Uh, first off... I don't know about the director, um, Adam Wingard. I, you know, I think this is a mess of a movie, technically. But 
I love uh, Rebecca Hall. Uh, I don't know, like, like things I've seen her in. You, I always like her. I'm always uh, pulled into her characters, and she does a great job in this movie. But there's not much to work with. Um, even the was it Brian Tyree Henry from the other movie? Like, I, I got it. But then they bring in this fucking ass hat. Um, now the actor, fine. I, I don't know. He's the trapper, and. You got the daughter who's mute, who doesn't talk. She's connected to the island from the tribe. Yeah, she was in the other movie. You just fucking kept putting on the brakes in this movie. It was so fucking annoying. You have a TV show that is excellent, by the way, for the most part. It's, you know, not perfection. But that's where you draw these things out and you make them have weight and depth and, you know, character. And then you kind of blend it into the show or the movies make it feel right this doesn't it, it just feels like it has nothing to do with the show except we've seen part of the show and now there's a secret part of the hollow earth and kong's looking for his people and there's like i said a little bit of action and stuff but sparkly shiny weird things are not gonna win me over in a movie like an hour and 46 minutes long and and it's Fucking the ending is like fucking 10 minutes of uh, insane shit. Like, do I really need to see the gravity reverse at the end of the fucking movie? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Again, there's so much beauty and awe and what they can do with these movies. With characters or creatures or whatever that I love. I, I, I've talked about this. I, I'll watch Godzilla put his tail between his legs and fly backwards, do kung fu moves, the campy shit. The childlike, whatever. And I won't tout them as the critical acclaim, whatever. But I've enjoyed them. And yes, it's nostalgia. Fine. I'm giving these a shot. I'm trying to see where these are going. I'm sort of into the universe. But I'm, you know, I can't get my friend into this into these movies. He won't even catch up. To, like, even get on an even ground to start talking about it. Except, he loved the show. So, he, you know... When you put the first Godzilla movie out, again, what is it, 2014, I don't know, with the kick-ass actor, and he's in the army, and you find out about the giants and Monarch, all that bull, whatever, no, that's more Kong, but okay. You fucked a lot of people over with this franchise. Great-looking Godzilla, the best special effects ever, just scary, insane, one of the greatest moments in Godzilla history is in that fucking movie, where the music cuts off, and it's just like, hum... And they play that music, and they're all doing the night dot. It's fucking epic bumps. But what does it goosebumps on me? But what does it do for the fucking looking back and watching that movie? You never watch it again. And then you got these things in between. This one friend did like Kong Godzilla, but one won't even bother. It's just not going to be a fun franchise. Okay, fuck them. They, you know, they're not going to get on board. They see the value in this. But here we are, after a fucking, it's supposed to be three years later, Kong's in Middle Earth, you know, doing his thing, um, I guess searching for his people, according to fucking Wiki and whatever, IMBD, he's looking for uh, more like him, and the dialogue in this movie, when everything comes screeching to a halt, fucking numerous times in this movie, is sometimes fucking dumb and stupid. I don't need to see a fucking really cool actor in a really cool set underwater in a submarine tell me if Godzilla fucking goes to Tiamat's lair, he's going to get supercharged. And again, you're talking with a daughter who's mute, who's doing sign language, and you're doing the thing. And there's one connection in the movie that's really good between the actress, Rebecca Hall, and the, the child actor. But one great moment, and it's just fucking watered down. And just fucking put through this bullshit. I don't want to see this fucking trapper character and the fucking nonsense that has to go on. Bad enough I'm going to have to believe you put a fucking exoskeleton thing on Kong's arm because by the end of the first act, sort of, because you never fucking, this movie doesn't really work well for me in my brain like that. Just thinking about where the fucking acts would be because... It just feels like it drags on for fucking no reason to show lots of bullshit. So, uh, yeah, 
I get annoyed at parts where it just comes to a halt. And not knowing where the structure is, in a sense, is probably bothering me too here and there. But Kong's doing his thing. The people are doing their thing. There's a signal. The little girl's mute who's special from the island. She's the adopted daughter now. Okay, fine. And in, in uh, Godzilla Minus One, it's done amazing. It, it, and I, I, when I watched that movie, I had to read the fucking subtitles in Godzilla Minus One. Okay, and that, and it's still riveting. Uh, and, and these are just as good as actors. Like I said, I love the Rebecca Hall and the daughter. The girl plays her epic. But what are you giving them? And you gotta fucking meet up with the fucking guy from the other movie. Fine, he's good in the movie. Did you meet up with the other one? It's the fucking stupid banter and nonsense. This movie should have kicked off the way it did. And never stopped except for a fucking critical moment here and there. And this shit is getting out of hand. Because you really want to show the trappings of that. But, again, Kong shows his ingenuity. He sets up traps with his axe. He's pulling things down and making pits. Fine, I'm okay with that. I was, oh, I was kind of okay when he was learning sign language. But, you know. All right, fine. Using weapons, uh, being more clever. I get it. And the animal instinct type thing and what he's doing, fine. You know beat your chest type stuff, but it gets a little more elevated. Um, he finds a fucking new place just as the humans are finding out what's going on, what's the signal. They got to go to Hollow Earth and some fucking trippy thing. It just seems fucking kind of dumb. Again, it's, it's putting on the brakes on this should be out of control, dangerous situation of a movie. Because when you, when you look at the bare bones of this, there's a secret part to Hollow Earth where a extinction-level villain is being held. And, again, when the humans go to Middle Earth with the little girl, and she finds her people, and you saw, there's a little, they tell you what's going on. And it just fucking seemed so dumb. Okay, well, before this, there was that, and this evil uh, manipulated this creature who apparently is good or neutral and Godzilla almost died and he's barely survived but they trapped the the great ape guy and apes are protectors of humanity titans are protectors of nature yeah okay you could do all this in your fucking tv show and not make it seem like wasted fucking time real estate on this fucking movie that should have been a chaotic gangbuster movie of holy shit this is end of the earth ship, but no, Godzilla's sleeping in the Coliseum. <laughs> All right, whatever. He beats up a monster. He's showing he's doing his thing. So Kong's on the water. Kong's on the Hollow Earth, doing his things, looking for people. He he creates an opening to a secret place no one knew about. Signals go off. Godzilla still protecting the earth from whatever. So he fights a tarantula guy who goes to sleep in the Coliseum. Then it's fucking sparkly shit and. Weird, stupid dialogue travel. We get to this place. And again, even if you want to put in spurts of Kong meeting up uh, in, a, in a pretty good scene, I'll admit. Because uh, it's in all the trailers where there's huge apes coming through the fog. And it reveals it's a small, well, small relatively for giant titans, I guess. But it's a baby, gorilla type, whatever. And... It sees Kong, and Kong kind of befriends him. It kind of brings him to its lair, and Kong's finding out that there's a whole bunch of his people. You know, I don't know if they're making allusions to the difference between apes and gorillas and orangutans and chimpanzees, but okay, there's a world underneath the ground, and this is connecting with the humans who are finding out their heritage from the little girl who's the destined child, and Godzilla, you know, chilling out, sleeping in the Coliseum. Uh-oh, we got to get him supercharged. He's got to go fuck with Tiamat, because Tiamat, whatever, right? You know, just um, more of an Oriental-type dragon. It's just like a long serpent with, but he's red, or what, magenta. You know, what? okay. And by the way, even talking about this seems pretty cool, but it doesn't work for me in this movie. Long 
stupid and things you know what i bet you if it's time these things aren't long but they're so fucking annoying to me because if you just paste it differently cut things down stop the stupid shit you could have had an hour and 40 minute fucking romp fest of with real tension with real ramifications for the world because as i said this extinction level event which kong finds is another ape who is not that impressive. However, he holds a glowing crystal that controls a Godzilla-like cold monster, right? It's huge. It's more of a four-legged creature where Godzilla can go on too, but whatever. And God King Kong gets his arm frostbite. So he's damaged, but it looks like he's beating his shit out of the Scar King, to tell you the truth, who has a whip thing with the thing at the end, which is fucking fine. Like, okay, I, like I said, I watched Silly Godzilla, Jet Jaguar. All right, let's just fucking get into that bullshit when he joins Godzilla, and it, it's just okay. So, Scar King's got a huge metal-type spine whip with the crystal at the end, and once he gets his ass kicked a little bit, he calls Shimo, whatever the fuck it is, Cold Monster, who you find out caused the last Ice Age. Fucking great. Uh, blessed Kong's arm. Gets frostbit. Loses his axe. And the little Kong who he kind of... Who actually was a savage trying to attack him. He kind of won him over. You know, his hawk grew three sizes that day. <laughs> his little uh, titan. So he helps Kong escape. And Kong's fucked. Comes to the little girl with the sign language type shit. And... These guys, okay, uh, and I'm granting this is okay. I'm not. This is not one of the things that pisses me off, but when it just adds to shit. So after the Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla Kong fucking fiasco, they had made plans and upgrades. Fine. Kong has an ex exoskeleton arm from his let's say elbow to his covering his hand, his fingers, and it's in all the trailers, and it's meant to heal the frostbite and giving him enhancement more support type thing, rocket punches, whatever, right? I'm fine with that. It's, it's in with the movie already. I did like the, the twist with Mecha Godzilla being the villain and Godzilla Kong, and, you know, I didn't mind Kong getting his ass kicked and then now kicking Godzilla's ass in this with the augmented arm. And I'm okay, like, because those are the things I'm going to grant is a new vision and a new, you know, just I have to deal with it and, I'll like it and learn to love it in a sense because I guess I will. Um, these, these are things I love, and the nostalgia does get me when they do certain things and it looks great. And you know, I felt myself being swept up, like the one scene with the um, mother and daughter, which is like again the only scene I'm really fucking getting to. Anyway, so when when, when you understand this, the the stakes of this movie, it should be terrifying because. The Scar King has beaten fucking Kong. He's going to find his way to this special place in Hollow Earth. And his ultimate goal? Get to the surface. Cutting everything short with all the bullshit. It comes to fruition, but not before Kong, with his new mechanical arm, is told by the, I believe, the little girl, the Mothra chick, because she is now... At this point in the movie, you're going to awaken Mothra or call Mothra for help. Because, again, it's revealed to whatever hieroglyphics and stuff that Mothra was the guiding the glue that held them together. And it can convince Godzilla. I guess it works for me. I, I don't mind. It, Mothra's always been a, um, you know, had a special place for me, even though it wasn't the fantastical monster I like to watch, in a sense. But whatever. Kong goes to Earth. Calls out Godzilla. Godzilla comes in. There's one cool moment because King Kong puts up his hands like, hey, 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 you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm here to talk. And it doesn't work because Godzilla just thinks they're taking up where they left off. Because in the last one, I, it's take it's given that the last one, Godzilla says, look, I'm letting you live. Because you helped me here at the end with Mecha Godzilla because I was getting fucked up. But stay out of my fucking territory. And Kong goes back to Hollow Earth. Godzilla's okay with that. And that's set up in this movie. Hey, as long as they stay in each other's territory, whatever. But Kong has to fight him. They get blah, blah, blah. 
and uh, Khan gets the upper hand and then loses the upper hand because he's like dragging him like a caveman, which I thought was funny. And then Mothra comes and convinces him. Then, you know, the movie's going to pick up where the Scar King and his ice, de- fucking Godzilla ice, whatever, Shimo, just gets to this place and they're going to wreck everything. Bad shit's happening in Hollow Earth. Stupid characters and shitty dialogue with shitty writing is all over this shit. And it, it's a continuation from where it went before. But because of all the fucking times, it's coming to a screeching halt with shitty shit and you know things to wow me with sparkles and fucking stupid characters who get eaten by fucking tree mon- whatever. It's just... And you've got this character who should have been killed right off the bat, this trapper guy. Just... You know, don't play me, Kiss. I was made for loving you. I don't care about his fucking headphones and what his song he was. It, I was made for loving you. That's the song you're playing when you're putting Kong's um bionic fucking exoskeleton arm on. All right, whatever. So, Mothra gets them to fucking hollow work. This is the scene from the trailer because they come through the portal and just get plowed into Earth like a meteor. You know, they're okay. So, whatever. They come bursting out of the ground, and that's the scene you see. And then, boom. There's slow motion. There's close-ups in here. And there were close-ups of humans and stuff. that I wanted to punch them in their face. And more like I wanted to punch the editor or the director in the face, because you just lost this movie, which is elements of fucking awesome Titan monster shit. Uh, you know? I, and it, to me, it almost seems like this... This movie was a, trying to do a clever way of showing monsters, but not really showing them. Like, how do you hold Godzilla back and show the little bullshit and not make him more intricate to the story? I just, you know, whatever. Malta should have been on this game, the little girl. Everything should have been pivoted. Maybe start off a little slower with the kid and the Malta thing. Anyway... Shit goes down in Hollow Earth, special place, and because this tribe of people can manipulate, uh, well, they move, uh, I guess, mineral-type rocks and stones in certain places, which keeps the gravity crystal fucking craziness of Hollow Earth in check. Whatever. The fight starts. They go nuts. And at this point, Kong only has his arm, bionic arm, type exo thing skull king has his axe that's kind of rectified but it becomes a mcguffin type bullshit anyway if i even said that right hollow earth is in a fucking you're getting some fights some craziness is going on and they break the fucking crystal or the whatever's making it so they don't float around like idiots for five minutes so maybe it's not five minutes it feels like it But we've got Godzilla, King Kong, Scar Enemy, Shimo Cold Godzilla, Baby Kong, and various henchlings or, you know, minions or, you know, they're all scared of Scar King, but they work for him. And they're leaping from rock to rock, you know. And I'm like, granted, if I wanted to give this, to have fun with this scene, like I would when Godzilla's doing Kung Fu in the old ones, I'm set in that mindset from the beginning. And when the aliens show up in the old ones and the special effects are horrible, and like, you're already there, you're put on this road that you're not getting surprised. This movie wants you to be riveted in realism connections with humanity and mother daughter it wants technology and the wonder of new fucking things with my pole my camera and i'm the fucking podcast guy no one believes and you want to put that in what it's, it's almost like what dc was trying to do with the fucking superheroes you can't give me something let me be immersed and then keep pulling the brakes you know pulling the rug out from under me Look, I, I should have really enjoyed the scene because it was fucking dumb and bonkers. But 
Again, this is not Jackie fucking Chan, Jet Li doing their shit. Uh, some of the old kung fu movies where you're 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 thinking about levels of skill and chicanery. How do they jump to this roof? You know, I get, I get it, but this is fucking Titans, and it's just I don't think it's something you fucking do. And if you do do it, show them like fucking ants or mosquitoes just stuck in panic. Like, what the fuck are you going to do when gravity reverses? You don't fucking jump, push off, spin around, do the... Okay. If I'm going to give it more credit than I already did, fine for the gr apes and the, uh, the titan monkeys and whatever. Fine. Sure. King Kong could fucking toss a rock about fucking... 300 yards, because I don't know about distance and fucking how big they are. So it looked like, you know, you know, 150 feet, but it's got to be longer. And he hits a fucking, uh, one of the vicious, uh, you know, enslaved apes that was attacking him in the head. And it gets knocked to the ground, but just gets up and moves away and runs back. What was the fucking point? So, again... Uh, special hollow art place gets fucking shit to fucking nuts and Kong and Scar King get sent to Earth followed by Cold Godzilla, Shimo and Godzilla eventually and they appear and they tr again, again they try to give you this awareness of let's say Kong or something that there's people here that he has to protect them and I guess they sort of do that with Godzilla and with his theme, but you're destroying buildings and, you know, people are fucking obviously dying everywhere. But if you didn't tie this in right, if you didn't have halting, screeching, shitty dialogue and scenes, this could have been holy fucking shit. Scar comes out blasting when he's got his axe and his fucking chain. King Kong's fighting him, getting it beaten. Shoot, uh, cold Godzilla just starts an ice age. Yeah, it hits the sky with a cold beam and starts changing the earth to blast buildings. I mean, I get King Ghidorah, though, and I like that one, okay? Despite the human garbage in that fucking movie with the family and the fucking bullshit. Another fucking actress I love in that movie. But... This should have been an epic, scary fucking movie. There should have been scenes like where the sound cuts off and you just hear this old Godzilla hum screech. Like, it gives me chills thinking about it. That's how much I love that one scene in that shitty Godzilla movie. But here we are. Kong Godzilla, Godzilla Kong, a new empire. And it just fucking is bullshit here at the end. This end of the movie is just, for me, it turned into nonsense bullshit. And, oh, okay, so, I'm sorry. When Skull came through, Skull King, he came through with his crystal whip thing, maybe. But, the act is embedded in the portal tube that's on Hollow Earth. And the baby Kong sees it. And obviously, I'm jumping things, but it's not going too well on Earth. Whatever, Kong, Godzilla. So, baby Kong jumps in and hits the fucking axe and tumbles through to our Earth. And as the fight's going on, the fucking baby uses the crystal, I mean, the axe to break the crystal. Because as they're fighting and doing their thing, Kong separates the crystal from the whip or some fucking bullshit. Godzilla, there's a little bit of teamwork going on. Obviously, Godzilla's got to take care of the fucking cold Godzilla and it's got to happen fast because shit's going bad and Scar's holding up the crystal, just fucking bragging because it fucking falls to that, which I think is stupid. So for generations or how many fucking years... Scar has this crystal on the end of his fucking spine whip, and it's controlled Shimo for all this time, and when he gets onto Earth, fine, it's broken, it's okay. 
Shimo's not going to fight. It's a fight between Kong, whatever, with the babies there. I thought the baby was killed. Not that it should have been, but it kind of would have added some more weight to what was going on. But big explosion, Scar's alone. Kong was beating Scar on his own, by the way, for fucking already. So I wasn't really fucking worried. But there's a cool scene. Spoilers. Fucking Kong, Godzilla, bat him around with each other. The fucking Kong lifts him up. He's choking him out with his fucking bionic exoskeleton arm. Mothra had an appearance here and there, but you can really not really solidify it in that, which shows you they'll probably green light and fast track a fucking Mothra movie. But give it to the guys who did Godzilla Minus One, and I'll fucking probably love it. Here, there's a scene where, again, intelligence or communication where it's Kong. He's got his right hand up with the fucking exoskeleton, grabbing him by the neck, and he's strangling him. And Godzilla's charging up, looking around, and the cold Godzilla Shimo realizes, hey, I'm no longer under control, and I'm probably going to get fucking killed. Because I started an Ice Age in the past, I was obviously working for the fucking villain, I really fucked up Kong's arm, gave him frostbite. And I'm still fucking in the middle of this fucking war. And seconds ago, I got free. So what does it do? It fucking blasts Scar King. And, okay, it, fine. Um, <laughs> Just fucking Hulk does... Uh, Hulk, oh my god. And King Kong does this. Ah, just fucking smashes Scar King. You know... Throws a fucking tantrum, beats it up, showing he's the fucking king again, or whatever. Guys, I was like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm no longer fucking magenta, <laughs> whatever. Uh, maybe he is at this point, I'm not sure, but okay, they do their screams, or whatever the fuck it is. And, you know, Shimo's fucking Ice Ages, oh yeah, that's right. So I think Godzilla's magenta Augmented radiation cosmic blast. He shoots it up into the sky, undoing Shimo's Ice Age. And the sun comes out and shines on everybody, and they look at each other. All right. Again, I'm into anything if you put me on it. Make me settle in and enjoy the ride. Yes, I'll watch the fucking four to seven childlike Godzilla movies that are fucking... Terrible in certain circumstances. Yes, I will even appreciate the 2014 attempt. As I mentioned, one of the best scenes ever is still that um, scene when they jump out of the plane. And it's fucking, that music is playing and the sounds dropped. That's fucking epic. So, whatever. I want to think I'll look back on this and watch it again and love it. But I think this is wasted Real estate, or lack of a better word, like you made an hour and 40 fucking five minute movie. And when I looked and saw it was like an hour and 41 minutes, and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I know what's going to happen. I don't even wear a watch, but I couldn't believe like how many times this thing was grinding to a halt to show me shiny fucking glittery things and new pathways and let me listen to horrible fucking dialogue. This Rebecca Hall is probably award winning. I don't know. But I love her in everything, like I said. She can play anything. I just fucking know her immediately. But I don't want to see fucking Dan Stevens as the fucking trapper. And have him live and have him fucking open his mouth constantly. Like, I know you needed these characters to be focal points and. I tolerated the um, Bernie Hayes guy because he kind of fit in. It felt like he belonged, like he was in the Kong movie. And the guy, like, you know, he's one of those people on the outskirts of this who is getting shit on for no one believing it. But now the earth has to fucking recognize it. Which brings me again to this ending slash what were the stakes in this fucking movie? Godzilla versus the King of whatever, King of Monsters. Had fucking stakes. I felt like the earth was fucking darkening and getting to doom. Like it was 
you know, it, this is what should be the focal point of some of these movies, if not some fun side movies. I get. Uh, again, I'd watch a moth movie. Um, you know, Godzilla doesn't have to, you know, save the fucking universe next time. But fine. And you're brushing through these things that, like, what do you do? Godzilla beat a tarantula, then he beat a underwater fucking sea monster. And he's like, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, it just, you know, I, I think you're going wrong with this. This is obviously a King Kong movie. Sorry, it's a Kong fucking movie. It's a Hollow Earth Kong movie, daughter fucking mother relationship movie. And the stakes are in the wrong place. Uh, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but the daughter was not going to leave the mother and stay with this tribe, which is her original family. But that's a major thing. And this fucking Rebecca Hall, I'll say it again, I love her. She's great in this. She's perfect to play parts like this. But they have to be restricted, restrained, focused. When she's worried about her fucking daughter, you know, adopted daughter, whatever, and they take her away to go speak to the whatever, and there's a, there's a, there's a hint or an outright statement that these beings are speaking telepathically. So I thought one of the things would be, maybe I missed it, but the daughter reassuring the mother telepathically, like her, her powers are opening up or just starting. However, there's, there's a couple, there's a moment there where this actress is, fucking spot on the daughter is spot on and i actually felt worried concerned and in the movie so kudos to them too again i had no problem with the bernie hayes character he actually added stuff to this that was kind of needed in that sense just put it in different places ramp things up and smooth them out with these things but keep this going this was a fucking movie that should have been oh my god there's a fucking ice age godzilla like, the state should have been immediately known. The world should have been on alert. Not this, you know, I work in this and that. I wasn't given credit. No one believes me. You know, monarch shit. Just a TV show. Leave it for that. I, I don't get it. Isn't that what you did this for? It, it might have been a mistake in, in the long run with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I love that fucking show. Granted, you got to give the first season, you got to give it a little time. But whatever, how many seasons that is, it's fucking amazing. And when they tied in the movies, it was, it was just part of the fucking scenery that worked because it was their world. So at the end of Thor 2, The Dark World, season whatever it starts of S.H.I.E.L.D., season 3. And they're starting, they're like picking up shit in the street. You know, Monarch the show it has to do that with this and it should have been the ground the, the the foundation for a lot of this think of the opportunity you have uh, a, a show that's kind of gotten good word of mouth i guess i'm gonna be honest and i don't know about the critical acclaim in 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 the, in the broader sense but let's just go with the it's a good show i think so it's got the talent the fucking thing it has a couple it made a couple of mistakes i talked about it in my podcast on it however your opportunity is to really dig deep and make the fucking dialogue and the stories matter make the family shit matter show you know you don't have to have this actress and rebecca holt in this show but you could make their presence known and connect things better I don't need to see this fucking nonsense in, in the school and, you know, her grades and, you know, where this lady works and she's not head of a division. No one will listen. She's got these energy signals. What does it mean? Her daughter's drawings. They All of a sudden, they're similar. Oh, they match the wavelength. Let me go to this Bernie guy from the other show. All this could have been done in a better way, set up in the TV show, and you could have executed it in the movie almost like you did. But you wouldn't need the bullshit. I don't need to see, uh, hear the fucking dialogue of utter bullshit between these fucking asshats. <clears throat> I, I just don't. And the characters become asshats to me when you're forcing this shit on me. Again, Rebecca Hall, great. Bernie, great. But 
guess what? When they start interacting with the trap, I'm like, what the fuck? I don't care. Is this supposed to be romantic involvement? Is this just a friendly thing? It's just this, I'm going to make some dialogue to kind of, like, who cares? And again, you can point to Godzilla Minus One. I watched the subtitle. There are fucking scenes that drag on and on. But they matter. Okay? He's got a fucking... Uh, uh, he comes back from the war um, a disgrace because, in a sense, he's a kamikaze pilot who faked his death, who didn't die. And when he went to the island, he got all his fucking people there killed. He comes back the only survivor. He fucking ladies in his house. It's bombs have hit. You know, it's the war, war, Japan, and it's epic, and it's fucking heartbreaking, and it's fucking riveting, and he gets angry, and the white, the girl becomes his girlfriend, but it's not his real, it's just fucking awesome, in a way where it should be, where you're not showing me Godzilla, you have blue balls in me, but when it happens, it happens, it's just epic, and the side characters that kind of influence things really matter, it did not give a fuck, again, the guy who, the Trapper character in this movie ruins, or not ruins, it, it it depreciates the value of how good Rebecca Hall is as an actress and what she's given in this movie. Same with Bernie. Again, you could have had these little tropes and hallmarks in the movie, which would have worked and did work to an extent. But, you, you know, you're introducing a fucking secret place and the uh, race of mute people who are telepathic, and you've got crystals, and, you know, where does fucking Malta come out of fucking nowhere in this movie? As, as, you know, as a thought, because the child is a descendant and destined to be, to unite the world's monsters, okay? Fine. <clears throat> You're gonna have to have Space Godzilla for the next villain of any of these fucking movies. And I say that knowing that most people don't know what the fuck a space Godzilla really is. Maybe, because I guess you love Godzilla, but there's a Godzilla monster that comes from an asteroid, from his DNA, from being mixed with another monster that he blew out of the fucking space. And he uses his breath to shoot it in the fucking, through the atmosphere. It's fucking one of the most epic scenes in Godzilla history, in a way. All right, but this meteor hits, and it's Godzilla with these huge crystals blowing like just out of his chest like doomsday or you know and he's they're fucking huge crystals like giant crystals on his arms his shoulders his back and it fucks up godzilla's mojo and it fucking um i think there's a godzilla juniors in that movie who's kind of big at this point in those movies he's almost like a full godzilla but godzilla's going nuclear and he's going magenta, I think, in that movie, which is, uh-oh, fucking connect the dots. And it it just seems fucking nuts. Nuts. Because you haven't put aliens in the fucking movie yet, because that's where I would have went. I would have said you have to put fucking aliens. And you have to get aliens who control King Ghidorah. Like, whatever. Because now you've had King Ghidorah get his ass kicked. Godzilla, Kong's been there doing his shit. And you have the cold Godzilla who got his ass, well, he, by the way, the end of this fucking movie shows Godzilla going back to rest in the Coliseum, the daughter staying with the mother, and Kong rides Shimo, cold Godzilla, with baby Godzilla, back to the fucking apes, titans, and they roar, he pets the fucking thing, so, what's next? Maybe the Earth's going to crack in half and all the Titans have to come together and like with their arms and just hold the Earth together. Right? Like one arm on one side of the crack, one arm on the other side of the crack, and you got to give fucking Kong two bionic exoskeletons, and then you find out they made it for Godzilla, but then the fucking tarantula comes back to life and he's got eight legs, and he's like stitching for the Earth, and he's using his special stitching, his webbing. Look. Godzilla Kong, the new empire, to me, is just a wasted opportunity. You can can people have fun? Sure, people have fun with this. I'm, sh you know, again, I'm surprised. I I got the fucking balls to sit through Madam Web, enjoy it, and make a podcast on it. T 
tell to tell people I loved She Hulk, the fucking TV show, when it was pandered and fucking whatever. Like, I try to be honest and say critically, yeah, isn't that they're not great? They're not good. I pr- profess my love for the Green Lantern movie, which is a bad fucking movie. But I'm a nostalgic geek, comic geek, and I want to see Green Lantern shit. So I like to I watch the movie over and over. I watch it way too many times than I should. King Kong. Skull Island, Kong Skull Island, love it, watch it. Godzilla King of Monsters, watch it, rewatch. And this is not going to be rewatched. It's just not. It just feels like a fucking footnote when it should have been <clears throat> one of the epic, most scariest fucking Titan type Godzilla movies ever. You had the town here, this fucking Rebecca, whatever fucking. Like, I keep calling her an actress name, but I don't remember the fucking uh, Eileen, or Dr. Eileen Andrews. Uh, uh, you know, get these, just rein things in. You had the talent, uh, make it really dependent on the daughter and baby Kong. I don't know, but I didn't need the bullshit. I didn't need to kind of lie that it's a guy. Go- Godzilla's. Godzilla just feels like an afterthought in this whole fucking movie. It just does. Now, I I could see I could see the point of having a talk with somebody and going, look, you have an ape and a lizard. The lizard is a pea brain, remember this from the old King Kong Godzilla? And Kong is like, you know, close to a child and whatever. So obviously the more communication, the more connections we will have will be to the Kong, and you can show it more in, in the movies. I get it. His facial expressions, his mannerisms, um, making him more intelligent. Like, you're not making Godzilla set up booby traps. You're just fucking not. Right? So I, so I get it. So a Kong-Godzilla movie, I guess the formula would be, it has to be a Kong-centric movie, and Godzilla's just that, you know bouncer you call when you need him right you know he's the police he's the you know he's that presence that's gonna come in and fuck you up and it might not he might not care who you are if you're good or bad like he's not stay the fuck out of his territory if you come on if you come on the scene and like he can detect you in his motu way his titan way whatever fields of electro electromagnetic whatever he comes and he says, get the fuck out of here, he kills you, and then he goes to sleep somewhere. Kong, in his movies, you see his purposes like, you know, I rule hollow earth, but I got no one to rule. I run around setting traps and booby traps for animals, and I'm searching for my people. I found them. Holy shit. Should be world destruction, but it's not. Again, I don't know. Godzilla Kong, a new empire. I don't even, I wouldn't recommend it, which is sucky. To, you know, whatever. Again, I'm, I'm no authority on these things. I just want to have fun, get immersed in a movie, get carried away, and have that little child in me, you know, satisfied and wonder. And don't get me wrong, there are elements there, you know, what they can do with Kong and Godzilla, the way they can move. Like, it's just, it just can be amazing. But it doesn't make for a great movie. I'm sorry, and even if I was to be, you know, convinced this is actually a good movie, just not for me. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm it's hard enough for me to watch these movies with friends that are into this shit to begin with. When you know they feel like they've been fucked anyway, so I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like I should recommend this. I guess that's where I'll end this in that sense. Um, this is pretty much a long one. In a way of kind of not really sure where I stand with this movie still. Because it's recent for me. Real recent. And I didn't like what they kind of... I felt they did to me throughout the movie. With hitting the brakes and the shitty dialogue. And the story they're trying to tell. With some superb actresses. Like missed opportunities everywhere. Again, in the Bernie character being spoiled by the Trapper. He could have been awesome in this movie. So I guess that's where I'll leave this. It's a, not a highly recommended movie. If you're gonna, if you watch the King Kong vs Godzilla and you like that twist with 
the Mecha Godzilla at the end. I think you'll probably enjoy this. I can say that. It just goes a little too far and a little too short, you know, in areas that it should have for me. And I wasn't wowed and caught up in this excitement when it should have been a peak moment in this Titan universe of calamity and destruction and potential extinction. And it just doesn't live up to that. So I guess that'll be it. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.